And we're back. Welcome to day two at the Canada Wide Science Fair. Let's go check out some more projects. All right, so we will start off with your name. Kaya Lynn Addy. Wonderful, and where are you from? I'm from Oshawa, Ontario. Okay, and what grade are you in? I'm in grade 12. Okay, wonderful. So, can you walk us through your project in like a 30 second to a minute summary? Yeah, so for the past year and a half, I've been looking at the medical applications of genetically modified stem cells through the use of CRISPR-Cas9 technology. Cas9 is a portion of the bacterial immune system that we can use to replace broken genes that you would find in mutated cells, such as those um, of those who suffer from muscular dystrophy, cystic fibrosis, and myelin sheath disorders. Very cool. Okay, so what was the coolest thing that you found out? Um, I have found quite possibly the first way ever to regenerate the myelin sheath. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that sounds very impressive. Have, so what does that mean? So there have been many tests done to see what we can do to improve the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath is basically the insulation found on the brain and the neurons and everything that mean that the electrical impulses that the brain sends out to help you move, that they don't escape. So, for those suffering from myelin sheath disorders, there are little patches that are missing from the myelin sheath, so they can't move properly. If we are able to increase the PLP1 protein produ production through altered stem cells, we should be able to help to regenerate the myelin sheath. Very cool. Okay, and what's been your favorite part of the science fair so far? Um, meeting so many different people. I've never been outside of Ontario and Quebec, what? so this has been absolutely insane for me. Okay, very nice, very nice. And what are you looking forward to the most in the rest of the week? Um, just continuing to meet new people. I really enjoyed meeting with the judges and everything, even though there's been like a certain degree of stress with yeah. it. It's been really cool, all of the different people I've met. I've made a lot of contacts, which is super exciting. Awesome. So yeah. And you're in grade 12. Well, where are you off to next year? Uh, so I have one more semester of high school as I lost a couple of credits back in grade 9 due okay. to medical issues. Yeah. But after that I'm looking at the University of Ottawa for their health science program. And then wow. from there I'm hoping for either biomedical research or occupational therapy for pediatrics and adolescents. Very cool. So you're going to have a long future ahead it I seems. So. Alright. Okay, so my name is Jesse. What I'm is Jesse. your name? Yeah, Emery. Emery. Yes. And who do you work for? I work for Public Health Agents Canada. Yeah. P-Hack, yes. wonderful. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about what P-Hack does for Canada? Yes, oh, we do a lot of good things. Uh, one of the things we do here, we do uh, responsible for um, by safety, by security, and anybody who has a uh, lab for uh, pathogens, we do inspections, we do awareness, we do all kinds of stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. So as a person who works in a lab, what does that mean for me? Uh, okay, you have to be careful. You have to wash your hands, you have to wear gloves, you have to follow the procedures to make sure that you're safe. Okay, so are you equivalent of, say, the CDC for Canada? Uh, kind of. <laughs> kind of? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Okay. And what do you think is the most fun part about working for PHAC? Um, just giving people uh, and then to make sure there is awareness. Uh, and then when people understand what you did to help them, it's, it's great. And what do you hope that kids will learn today when they come and chat with you? They can wash their hands properly when they're handling experiment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Stop and wear gloves. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And uh, what do you think is the most exciting part about science in Canada right now? Um, the future is great. When I look at the uh, number of innovations kids have, the brain, the future is great. I'm Wonderful. Very <laughs> yeah, thank you. Wonderful. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. All right, let's check out some more booths. Now that we've talked to the Public Health Agency of Canada, let's talk to a microbiology project. Here's one now. Hi, Carlos. Hello. Do you mind if we interview you quick for a video? Oh, yeah, that's fine. All right. So my name is Jesse, and you are? My name is Carlos. And where are you from, Carlos? I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Awesome. So do you think it's warm here right now? <laughs> well, a bit warmer than in Winnipeg, yes. A little <laughs> rain, though, but... yeah. All right. And what grade are you in, Carlos? I'm grade 8. All right. Awesome. So, do you want us to take us, to take us through your project in like 30 seconds? 30 seconds. All right. I'll try to do it. Okay. So, basically, in the last few years, bacteria have been evolving to resist antibiotics faster than ever, and are turning into superbugs, which are basically bacteria immune to almost everything we have. 
And we should take this seriously because it is estimated that in 2050, there's going to be more deaths due to resistant bacteria than cancer. And so, in order to find um, an alternative for antibiotics, bacteriophages could be one, which are basically viruses that replicate themselves inside bacteria using different methods. Um, what they do, what, the lytic cycle, which is the most common one, consists of the bac bacteriophage, which is the virus, inserting its DNA into the bacteria. This destroys the bacterial chromosome. Then it uses the proteins the bacteria has to create new parts of new viruses inside of the bacteria. The pressure is so high inside the bacteria that it explodes, killing the bacteria and releasing many new bacteriophages into the world. And so this can be used medically, as there are many different types of bacteriophages that only attack one bacteria. And there are no bacteriophages known that attack human cells. So they can be used medically and are, and are a good alternative to antibiotics. Wow, that is so cool. So it could be an interesting alternative to solve this big problem. Yeah. So what's been your, or what's been your most favorite part of the week so far? Well, I've been in laboratories playing with different, like, going to my favorite subjects. I could, I could choose, I could choose where to, what lab to attend to, and what kind of subjects I like the most. For example, physics, biology. I could learn more about the topic more thoroughly and in a more, in a deeper way. Very cool. Okay. And what do you do in your spare time when you're not learning about viruses? Well, it, that's how I even got the idea for this project. I, I really like watching YouTube in my spare time. Mm. And so, and so I, while I was scrolling through it, I found this chana, channel called Chris Gazart, and they make a lot of science videos. And so, you, you, you should just try to check science out before you have a chance to judge it. All right. And do you have a final message for all of the school kids that are going to watch this video? Well, you should work hard and, um, yeah, I don't know. What to say. <laughs> how, about, how about look into the camera and say, I love science. All right. I love science and you should as well. That's perfect. All right. Thank you so much, Carlos. Yeah. Bonjour, moi c'est Stephen. Euh, je suis en 11e année, je viens du Québec, de Montréal. Euh, donc pour mon projet, ce que j'ai fait, euh, c'est qu'en ce moment, pour vous mettre en contexte, les temps d'attente au sein de la salle d'urgence deviennent une très grande problématique au sein du Canada, plus, 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 plus spécifiquement au Québec. Donc ce que j'ai fait, c'est qu'en utilisant les données historiques de la salle et des, et des variables externes comme la météo et les grands événements dans la ville, je prédis l'afflux de patients, les temps d'attente et la capacité de traitement des médecins au sein de la salle d'urgence. Puis j'ai créé un logiciel informatique qui est capable d'identifier les journées et les heures durant lesquelles il peut y avoir, il y aura potentiellement du overstaffing ou du understaffing au sein de la salle. Puis ensuite, je mets des recommandations pour pouvoir contrer ces problèmes de staffing pour optimiser les horaires dans la salle. Bon, merci. Merci beaucoup. Now we're back in STEM Expo. Look around me, there's so many people. You can practically feel the science. So in the fair, we have about 450 kids participating, but we're expecting over 7,500 school kids to come and visit both the Project Zone upstairs and STEM Expo, which I'm standing in right now. All those kids are going to come share in the science that we're presenting here at Fredericton over the next three days. If you get the chance, come and check out the projects and STEM Expo tomorrow here at the University of New Brunswick. Now, let's take some time to talk to some of these companies and organizations about the cool science and engineering that they're doing in Canada right now. Let's take some time to talk to Let's Talk Science. What's your name? My name's Charles, Charles Parody. And do you work for Let's Talk Science? Yeah, I do. I'm one of their employees, but we have a massive network of over 3,000 volunteers, including some from UNB helping us out today. Amazing. And how long have you been involved in the organization? It's been almost three years for me, yeah. But the organization's been around for 25. That's amazing. So tell me a little bit about what you guys do. Yeah, one of our main missions is to ensure that kids from coast to coast to coast develop their STEM skills, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. And today we're doing that by showing them 360-degree videos of non-traditional STEM careers, because regardless of what job you can think of, they all need STEM. That's so cool. So what are you hoping that the kids will take away from coming to visit your booth today? That STEM is essential to anything they're going to do in the future. 
that is a wonderful message, and I think it fits in right with the message of the overall fair. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So have you got, had a chance to go upstairs and check out the projects? Uh, no, we've had a pretty sizable line of the last couple of days. Uh, I've been lucky to go to the washroom. <laughs> okay. So if you make it upstairs, is there anything you're particularly excited to see that a finalist might be working on? Um, I've been talking to some of them in line, and, and for me, just seeing their projects, it's absolutely mind-blowing. The level of engagement that the youth have here, it just blows me away, because I wasn't thinking that way when I was 14, 15, or 16. Absolutely. So do you have a final message for the school kids that are going to watch this that aren't able to come today? STEM is going to help you in anything you do. Just remember that. That's wonderful. Okay, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Wow. On to the next booth. Science East is a science education center based in Fredericton. Let's chat to them a little bit about what they do. For Science East, we have a hands-on science center here in town, and we exist to help people um, get more excited about science. We go all over the province of New Brunswick and we go to schools and community events so that we can share our love of science with them. So how long have you been involved in the organization? I have been with Science East many, many, many years. Um, I was the first full-time employee, so I was, I've been with them for over 20 years now. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, and so I see you've been chatting with some of the students today. What are you hoping that they'll take away when they come visit you at the booth? Really, one of our main goals is that we want students in New Brunswick to get more involved with science fairs and the teachers as well. We want them to be the ones, the faces we see when the science fair comes back here in 2022. We go upstairs and we see some of the people we saw down here this year. That's our ultimate goal. We just want them to be more excited about science and having such an amazing event with it like this with so many kids coming through. I don't see how that can't be the outcome. Amazing. And what makes you excited about science? Everything. It's all the cool, fun stuff. You get to blow stuff up. It's all about answering questions, uh, learning new stuff all the time. Every day we learn something new. And science is such a dynamic subject that we never know everything. So it's changed so many times. It's wonderful. I couldn't have put it better myself. Well, thanks for chatting with us and uh, have a good day. Thank you. So as you can plainly see, science affects our lives in many different ways. So if you get the chance, come and check out the Canada-wide Science Fair here in Fredericton, or try to see the different ways that science affects your life every single day. That's all for now. After a morning of public viewing and exploring STEM Expo, the participants of CWSF head to one of the most anticipated events of the week, the awards ceremony. Just up the hill at UNB, the student students get to celebrate with a banquet and dance. I'm going out my mind. Give me some directions to get to you. To get to you. Ain't gonna waste my time. I know that we got connection, I think about you You're on my mind, on my mind, on my mind Yeah, I'm going out of my mind, out of my mind, out of my mind yeah. For you, my love You drive me crazy, tell me what to do 